Basil. Welcome to Look Back. This is where we take a look at reviews that I did a year, five years, and ten years ago, and I tell you what I think about them today. Although, in this video, there's no games from ten years ago. But I do have a lot of games from last year, and especially from five years ago. So let's take a look at last year. First, we'll start with Machi Kowo Bright Lights Big City. This was a Machi Kowo that was exclusive to Target. I liked it. Um, okay enough. There wasn't anything spectacular about it. It was kind of more of the same, and I found that my love of Machi Koro is dimming, even though it's still a game I would highly recommend for a lot of people. Then Exceed. This one you would think I rate much higher because it's from level 99, and I like their fighting games. The problem is this one has a lot of similarities to Battlecon War for Endines, and it's there's a lot of similarities, and I thought Battlecon did it much better. Exceed, I thought, was just a little too fiddly for me, although it's still a good game. Then... There's Wombat Rescue. This is a game in which you are essentially playing cards and doing things. So you move all the way across the board as a wombat to rescue your babies and move all the way back. And you get to move based on the, how the tiles are placed and different things. It's an intriguing game. It's fun. I guess it could be a bit samey after a while. Then Rorosaurus. This is a game in which you're rolling dice as fast as you can to attack other players and make combos. And as the game goes by, you'll be able to upgrade your monsters. It's actually a pretty good monster fighting other monster games. I'm surprised I don't hear more about this. Maybe it's the speed element that will turn a lot of people off. Kill Dr. Lucky. Kill Dr. Lucky is one of those games that has gone up and down for me over the years. The first time I played it, I really liked it, and then I kind of faded on it. But the newer version, although this is, not a, this is like a version that came out last year that's made to look like it's older, in which you are trying to kill the good doctor before, you know, without anyone else seeing you. It was really well put together, a simple, fun, party-style game. Then we have Legoria. This is a game uh, about um, getting die and then using those dies. It's the typical game where you get things, move over here, use those things to, to accomplish different missions. I really liked it. I especially liked the idea of taking groups of tiles on the board. There was a, a good concept. The theme is a little boring, but the game, I think, overcomes that. Then we have Star Wars Epic Duels. Jason and I took a look at that last. You know, that's a much older game. This game is a simple game, but it's a lot of fun. You ever want to see Han Solo and Chewbacca fighting against Darth Vader and two of his guards, or two stormtroopers? Do you want to see uh, the Emperor going up against Darth Maul. You can do that in this game. Silly fun with dice and card combat. Recommend it, although it's very difficult and expensive to find at this point in time. Get Rich Quick. I really like this game. This game is a, a game in which players are going to be picking which cards, which area on the board they're going to go to. Those areas are going to let them get money in different ways, depending on how many other players went to that spot, or maybe nobody else went to that spot. And trying to outguess where everyone else is going to go. Simple fun. Get rich quick. Then we have Ticket to Ride First Journey. This is a ticket to ride for younger children. This one was also one of the Target exclusives. Really like this game. It's very simple, but young children can play it, and it teaches them the basics of Ticket to Ride, connecting routes on the board, not worrying about the ticket part. I guess it just could have been called to ride. Um, but the building and, and, and connecting different cities. I mean, the tickets are there, but the values and stuff, just trying to form these areas on the board. Wonderful components too. Ticket to Ride First Journey. And then Role Player. This one has been going up in value. In fact, a lot of people have been like really talking about this one lately. In this game, you are building uh, a, a character sheet for uh, some role playing game, and you are trying to get the best stats that you possibly can. And by manipulating the dice and moving them around, a really cool game. The theme, I was like, ah, this doesn't sound interesting, but once I played it, really enjoyed it. Looking forward to the expansion. Okay, so for five years ago, a lot of games we replayed. First one was Go Hoops. Go Hoops is awful. Terrible. I cannot tell you how bad it is. You are rolling dice and a complicated, but yet no strategy at all. Do not buy it, ever. Uh, then there's Dominant Species, the card game. Now, Dominant Species is a really good game. It is highly regarded by many people. Complex, interesting. The card game was just so underwhelming. So not as good as the, the game and not even really that good of a game, actually. Then we have Farmageddon. This one I dropped. I was actually more nice to it, I guess, five years ago than I think I should have been. It's really just kind of a take that game. And this style of game just really doesn't jive with me much these days. Then there's Aeroplanes. This one from Martin Wallace was just not a game 
that I just felt, again, underwhelmed by it. Martin Wallace makes a lot of cool games, and automobiles I thought was, was fine, but airplanes just, I felt like there wasn't a whole lot of good choices in the game, and it felt a little too complex for how much fun the game uh, gave back. Then we have Off Your Rocker. This is a fun party game where everybody is sitting around the table and they all have some sort of weird uh, thing like you can only talk like a superhero and one person's trying to guess what it is by asking questions and listening to it. It's kind of like a game that you often hear played on uh, impromptu uh, comedy shows. Heap is a game that Sam and I took a look at. It's uh, your different goblins and stuff running around getting parts for your car and fighting each other. A simple, fun game. Dice Fari, this is an interesting game that doesn't look that great, but how you place dice on the table and scoring different patterns. Uh, so interesting for what it was. Flicking chicken, you're throwing a chicken around. That's the game. You're either gonna like it or not. I tend to like throwing uh, fake chickens around. Chupacabra, survive the night. This is one of the first videos that Z appeared in, um, just showing up and be like, survive the night. <laughs> Uh, when we recorded it, it's a silly uh, dice game, which was eventually bought by Steve Jackson Games. I don't know if they reprinted it or not. Awkward Family Photos. This is a game where you find those really awkward family photos, and you're writing funny things about it. It's a party game. I picked it up at Barnes & Noble's for a few bucks, and that's pretty much what it's worth, but it is good for some silly fun. Milestones. This is a Euro game in which you kind of are going around a track. It's almost like a large rondelle and building different things in a village. It's a good game, but really, I was struggling to think... Would I ever play this game again? It has like a forgettable quality to it, which is unfortunate. It's a good game, but I don't know that there's much to distinguish it from other games that are out there. Then we have Camelot Legends. This one I've also dropped, but that's just because I don't think this game is aging well. This is one of the first games from Z-Man Games, and I re-reviewed it, I guess, five years ago. I really like the concept of this, as you have knights, and you're using these knights to accomplish different goals and missions. Really cool, beautiful artwork, lots of cool text on the cards but it is essentially just put cards down and accomplish missions. Uh, then we have Legacy Gears of Time. This is a time uh, travel game. It actually does time correctly because you're going back in time and inventing different things. And when you invent something, it might make something in the future obsolete or it might allow you to invent something else later on in the future. Some very good Euro mechanisms for it. I never did play the expansion for it. I'd like to do that someday. Then Call to Glory, this is basically a game that's based on a lot of things. I think Crazy Chicken was a name for this, uh, Cars was a name. It's a very simple game in which you're playing sets of cards and trying to play a bigger set than somebody else, and I think it really works well. This is an excellent game. Uh, after that is the first and goal expansions. Now, I like these expansions, but I rated them too low originally because the fact is, without them, first and goal is a decent game. With them, first and goal is an amazing game. You don't need all of them, just get a couple of them, but they really change how you play the game. And then the Dominion base cards. I couldn't find my rating for these, um, so I'm just saying nine because the Dominion base cards were fantastic. I think they're actually included in the Dominion second edition, but they changed that uh, copper, gold, and silver all had a different look to them. Really nice. I liked how that, that worked together. They changed how the victory cards looked. Just a nice set of cards. Also, if you play the game a lot, your copper, silver, and victory point cards were getting beat up because they're used more than the rest of the cards. So this replaced them. But a nice little replacement. Even if it did come with a, hey, scan this and use it on the online game, which never did happen. But oh well. So that's what I reviewed one year and five years ago. Until next time, I'm Tom Vassell, and this has been Look Back. <laughs>